Hi, I am Lalit Vasist and you are watching Engineering Made Easy. This is a lecture about Amplitude Shift Keying ASK in short. Here we will understand what is ASK and we will also see the coherent demodulation of binary ASK. In the previous lectures we have uh, covered the modulation of uh, ASK. So this lecture is dedicated to the demodulation of ASK. So let's understand first what is ASK. In ASK, amplitude of the carrier wave is switched according to the digital input signal, which is also known as the modulating signal. So, this ASK is uh, analogous to AM. AM is a kind of analog modulation. In AM, the amplitude of the carrier wave is changed according to the variations in the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. In the same way, here the modulating signal is digital in binary form so the difference is only of modulating signal the carrier wave is analog in both of these cases so what happens here you see here that this is the digital input signal this is 011001 which is digital in nature and this is a sinusoidal analog carrier wave now in amplitude shift keying what we do whenever we want to transmit zero then no transmission happens the carrier wave is not transmitted so you see here no transmission so at these two places also there is no transmission of carrier wave but whenever we want to transmit one then this uh, continuous carrier wave is transmitted so at these places where it is one you see this part has been transmitted here and in the same way this has been transmitted at this place also so you can easily understand that this is the amplitude shift king because as per the variations in the digital input as it is changing from 0 to 1 or 1 to 1 as as according to the digital inputs we are switching the sinusoidal carrier wave the analog form of carrier wave so this is amplitude shift king okay now we will see the coherent demodulation of binary ask so let's see it here in this demodulation of binary ASK, we are using the coherent technique. First, uh, you should know what is coherent demodulation. In the process of coherent demodulation, since uh, uh, we use uh, two carrier waves, uh, one at the transmitting end and another at the receiving end. So these two carrier waves, uh, the carrier wave uh, at the transmitting end is uh, modulated by the modulating signal. But the carrier wave that is present at uh, the receiving end is locally generated by the oscillator by the local oscillator so in coherent detection we need to we need that uh, these these two kinds of carriers these two carriers at these both ends should be synchronized and they should be uh, synchronized in both phase and frequency so this is the requirement of coherent detection the benefit of coherent detection is that error probability decreases but the system becomes complex which is a disadvantage of it so let's understand uh, with the help of coherent detector we can demodulate the binary ask waveform okay this modulating system consists of the following components so these three components are basically used in this demodulator coherent demodulator okay of binary ask the product modulator integrator and the third one is a decision making device so in the next section we will see a block diagram containing these uh, all these three you know, components of this demodulation system so let's have a look so friends this is the block diagram of coherent detection or detection is also known as the demodulation so coherent demodulation of binary ask signal here we have used these three parts as uh, i have told you three components so what are uh, what they are for this is the product modulator here it has two inputs the first input is supplied with the incoming binary ask waveform here since uh, this is a demodulation process so at the input we have in this demodulation system at the input we have uh, ask waveform and at the output we will get binary inputs okay since it is a demodulation process so the, at the input of this product modulator at the two inputs at the first input it has incoming binary ask waveform and at the other input of this product modulator we have locally generated carrier wave 
since it is a coherent uh, demodulation coherent detection so as i told you that this carrier wave this locally generated carrier wave at the receiving end should be in synchronism with the carrier wave that is used at the transmitting end which is modulated by the modulating signal so these two signals are applied at the product modulators inputs to inputs and the output of this is fed to integrator this is an integrator it acts as a low pass filter here the integrator operates on uh, the output of the multiplier for successive bit intervals okay and here it performs a function of low pass filter it performs a low pass filtering action and this output of this uh, integrator is applied or you can say it goes into the this decision making device so what is the job of this decision making device it makes a decision based on comparison of two signals the output of this integrator it has uh, you can see it has two inputs one is the threshold this preset uh, threshold and the output of this integrator so job of this decision making device is to just to compare the output of the integrator with a preset threshold okay so how it performs if the output of this uh, decision making device is one if the threshold is exceeded it means it it gives one as its output if the value of threshold is more than the output of this integrator okay and and in another case it gives you zero another binary symbol which means if the threshold is less than the output of this integrator the coherent detection makes use of a linear operation so i have already told you that uh, this local carrier is in synchronism with the carrier wave used at the transmitting end which is modulated by the modulating signal so it is a coherent detection method for a binary ask signal here you need to understand that uh, there are two forms of synchronization that are required for the operation of coherent detection coherent detection means a synchronous detection these two forms of synchronization are phase synchronization and timing synchronization what happens in phase synchronization that the both carrier waves uh, one is used at the transmitter and another of the receiver they are phase locked they are locked in phase with respect to each other and another is the timing synchronization this timing synchronization ensures uh, the correct timing of the decision making operation in the receiver we know that decision making operation takes place in the receiving end by the decision making device so this should be in a timing synchronization with respect to the switching instance switching instance means when the switching takes place between 1 and 0 uh, symbols at the uh, transmitting end in the original binary data so this timing synchronization is required in the coherent detection between this decision making operation and the switching instance in the original binary data so i think this was uh, clear in the next video we will discuss uh, fsk psk dpsk and other forms of uh, modulation in detail their modulation and demodulation so keep watching and if you liked it please uh, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel engineering made easy thanks for watching friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can uh, visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye